I'm so grateful. Again, I'll just say it again. We are going to be recording this in case anybody just popped in. Um, so know that. And um, I'm really happy to be having this meeting because you all know I've been around for a few years at Cotting School, had connections for many, many years here. And I've had so many conversations with parents about how we're looking through different possibilities and our students sometimes just don't fit into the traditional roles that are out there, either for residential placements or for day programming um, and, and how frustrating that can be. I've been having those conversations with families for years and years, a lot more recently. And I've been having those conversations with DDS providers, with day programming, uh, you know, sort of advocating for ways that, that maybe they could change some things to make it a little bit more um, possible. And what, what's happening is, um, I think DDS's answer to that a little bit has been to talk about self-direction, which has kind of been empowering parents, I think, to come up with their own ideas of what could happen. And um, that's what we're hoping to do tonight. I want this to be a hopeful, um, supportive evening an opportunity for people to share with each other their own ideas and thoughts, for us to, to deliver information, but also you know, to gain support from each other in this process. There's so much we can learn from each other. Um, and you know, I don't want this to be discouraging. I just wanted to say today, I was teaching a group and you know, we're always learning about feeling words in my groups and we were learning about the word discouraged and um, you know, that is when um, someone is being caused to lose confidence and enthusiasm. Well, that's the opposite of what we want tonight. We wanna leave here with hope and excitement for the things that are possible. And um, I think with the help of, of um, Catherine uh, Stanley and Cindy Kaplan, that will we'll have some hope and some ideas and we'll get to hear from them about how they're moving forward. So that's the, the last piece that we're gonna do today. Um, I, let's see, I have to remember now, how do I share my screen? It's been such a long time since I did that. Hmm. Um, that's the green button down on the bottom. Thank you, the one that says share my screen. There you go. Yeah. Well, I'm not speaking, so I can pay attention. <laughs> it's, it's, all a team sudden, here. it's always a team effort. I haven't done that in a long time. Let me let me remember how to do that. Um, so you know, uh, and and I want to thank Catherine and um, Cindy so much for for participating here um, and being part of this. It's 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 they really um, are going to bring a lot to this. Um, evening. Um, hmm. So now there we go. Um, so tonight, first, I'm doing this now, I'm telling you what led up to this workshop. Um, and um, then we will be having an opportunity for you folks to share a little bit about if, if you um, were able to get hold of one of these um, forms to talk about your experiences in the past, the ideas you have for moving forward, what you're looking for. This was just something to brainstorm. You're not required to share any of it. It's just, if you have something to say, we'll get to a part about that. Um, and, and last, we'll hear from Catherine and Cindy. And the only other thing I wanna say is that, you know, um, is, is really that our, our students, it's the thing that's been most frustrating to me is when I see that our students don't fit, but they have so much to offer and so much to offer the world and the community. And um, I want them to be able to have those opportunities and they can fit into these places and we can create places where they're the, the natural um, participant is, is the students that we have and, and the, they can share their gifts. So, um, I think that's that's all I really need to say um, at this moment, and um, we can move on to the next. Yeah, Kathy, could you leave that slide up? Sure. On I the can. screen, because that's that's what we're going to be moving on to. That would be great. Yep. Yeah. Let me put it back into the slideshow view. There you go. How's that look? Fantastic. Thank you. 
Thank you. So Kathy um, has been sort of educating all of us at Cotting about um, new um, opportunities and new structures that are out there in the community for meeting the, the needs of our students when they transition into adulthood. And, um, you know, we know at Cotting that all of this starts with the vision and in all of the workshops that we've been giving around transition, um, parents who have um, made this transition say the vision is really important. Spending time to think about what it is your child, um, uh, the, the kinds of places and the kinds of circumstances in which your child flourishes. Um, so, um, we thought that it would be helpful for us to spend some time together to um, share some of our thoughts, share and to invite you to share some of your thoughts about your vision for your family members, for your child's good life. Um, we sent all of you this tool, which is called the Life Trajectory Family Perspective from Charting, um, uh, charting the Life Course. Um, which is uh, a program that DDS um, uses a lot in person-centered planning. Um, and um, one of the things that um, I think is helpful about this is that it um, helps us to think about what kinds of things that have happened in the past, that uh, the past life experiences, if you are able to look either on the slide or if you have a copy at home, uh, the past life experiences and events that have prepared or supported my child to move towards a vision for a good life. Um, the places where they were successful, happy, belonged. Um, and also to think about the past life experiences that pushed my child's trajectory towards things they did not want or I did not want for them. And so these can be things in all areas of your child's life in their life with family and extended family, school, in the community, peer relationships with friends. Um, and, and, uh, and as a way of thinking about, well, these are things that I know, um, or at least at this point, and a vision is a growing thing, you don't have to hold on to it forever in one form. Um, these are things I, I uh, circumstances in which I know my child was either not happy or growing or progressing. And then there are the sort of thinking towards the future, the moving forward, list current or future life experiences or goals that will continue to support my child to move towards a vision for a good life and list barriers or things to avoid that might get in the way of my child taking steps to reach their goals. We thought we'd start with this tool with this structure because thinking about a vision for a good life we know can feel overwhelming. And there's so many aspects to it. And so um, uh, please feel free to, to unmute or put in the chat um, I wonder how many of you um, took a look at this and took a stab at writing some notes in any of these boxes. Yeah, I definitely want to hear. I just want to say also, um, one thing I was thinking about today to add to this is, you know, um, also we want to, we, we spend a lot of time at school learning what your, your children have for a vision. And um, so it'll be interesting to, to see if those things match up. That's all. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So whether or not you looked at this, look at it now and just throw into the chat or unmute and or raise your hand to uh, uh, say out loud what comes to mind. It could be words, phrases. Shall I take this down so we can see faces yeah. now? Yes, yeah. please. Okay. Joy. Joy, yes. So anything that sparks joy, right? Mm -hmm. 
comfort. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Meaningful work, connection. Mm -hmm. Those words, meaning and connection, are two words that I hear a lot in my conversations with parents. To be really known by those caring mm -hmm. for her, for my child. Comfort and feeling safe. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts? Yes, Michelle. You're still muted a bit. Sorry. So, um, so for me, like the only thing I can write in this is um, for the past life experiences, like positive things is cotting. It's changed our life um, in so many ways. I could just go on and on and on. Um, but that's, that's when it started becoming positive for us anyway. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so being in an environment that, how would you describe Kati? Oh, well, in an environment, so Emma's first day when she came home, she said to me um, that she loved the school. And even though she drove two hours there and two hours back, she loved the school because everyone was just like her. And she has tons of friends. Where at the public school, she had didn't really have any friends. And, you know, she was separated from, from a whole lot. Um, and it was no fun for her. So, so it just, I think, I think that's the, the environment, the understanding, seeing people that are, that are familiar to her, that kind of look like her, that kind of maybe talk like her or behave like her. So, you know, it's okay to have her little Barbie doll with her. <laughs> so <laughs> that type of thing. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have lots of wonderful things coming in in the chat. Um, a process that allows her to grow and change. What we articulate for and with her now may not always be who she is or what she wants. Uh, uh, an environment that grows with her and helps her grow. Um, an environment that has hope and expects her to evolve and is invested in her growth as a human being meaningful part of a community, a community that supports yet encourages. There are a lot of growth words mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank and I you. think also experience purpose and value. I think we might not have said that one just yet. And yes. Where my child doesn't just feel cared for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more than being cared for care being cared for is important but not just yeah that's something that parents have said to me in the past this place will keep my child safe but i want a lot more than that i don't just want them to be safe i want them to have all these opportunities you're talking about yeah mm -hmm. an environment that gives elements of things they are passionate about mm -hmm. yes so um who uh, a child is who a young adult is, what, what makes them passionate, what makes them um, excited and interested that that is available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are, those are terrific. Um, write them down somewhere for yourselves too. We're writing them down here too. <laughs> um, so um, how about looking at the other side? sort of what kinds of environments or circumstances, um, sort of these are, these are what, what, what the vision looks like, the, the beginning of the vision looks like. These are the circumstances that, um, that are uh, necessary for growth and um, that, um, that you see as having importance in a full life, a best life for your child. So when you think about the circumstances, environments, or situations um, that um, don't do these for your child. And, and you know, this is a, a part of the vision process that um, begins to formulate what it is 
you know, sort of the, what it is you do want and what are the characteristics of what you don't want for your child? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think you, you can also say the opposite of all of that, but when you think about how would you describe that, it's a way of being able to make a picture of what you don't want when you're looking at circumstances. Um, well, maybe I can um, say something here. So a few years ago, um, Pam and Kathy, remember when we visited some of the day programs? Mm -hmm. And that was really great because um, what it, I guess in, it, what it allowed me to see is so, so there's words that describe the type of environment you want. And then there's the how they produce that. And maybe what I saw was some of the how they do that um, made me realize for Amelia, that would not be a good way to do that for her. So, so mm -hmm. some of the things I saw were, it's just, were, you know, lots of different activities during the day, um, maybe lots of in and out of the van, maybe a, a lot of, you know, different things every day. And all of those things for some kids might actually produce all of this. So passion and connection and everything. But for Amelia, that would not, that would be very hard for her based on what her experience at Cotting has been. So I've learned a lot about her over the years and how she can be her best self. And it's not in those kinds of programs I fear wouldn't allow her to be her best self because she would be too anxious about all the variety, I guess is the right word. So, um, so in, in this framework for me, programs that are more like, so I watched a webinar actually about a newish program where they're actually the, the student or the young adults are never in the building. They just are out on vans all day long which would be terrific for some people, but that would be for her maybe a very hard environment. So, um, so in addition to what the goals are, the feeling I want her to have, it's also how they do that. Yes. Okay. I think that's very, very important. And, and you're highlighting something that is also very important, which is a vision is very individualized for, um, for a you person. froze a little bit. A great example. Did I freeze? Just a little bit, so maybe say that sentence again. Thanks for letting me know. Um, you you highlight a, an important point, which is a vision is individual to a specific young adult. Mm -hmm. And so some of the things that um, everybody has been talking about, um, you know, a community that supports yet encourages meaningful part of a community, that is going to look somewhat different for each individual child. What kinds of circumstances help that individual feel like they're part of things? Um, and so the how is very important and the, the way in which um, a situation seeks to do that may fit for some and not for others. Thank you for raising that. Uh, is, would anybody else be willing to share a little bit of what, um, when, when you talk about joy and a process that allows for change, um, structured, meaningful day, um, how you see a, sort of what is the vision for um, the environment or situation that would help your child feel that way, as Rebecca just did. Yes, Katie. Hi, everybody. Um, for, for me, thinking about Robert's passion um, to keep him stimulated. Uh, when he's stagnant, it's no good. So I think that keeping his brain moving and developing as best possible. And the only way to do that for him would be definitely in areas where there's, he's passionate about something. Mm -hmm. So offering choices and um, like another mom spoke about, every kid is so different on what their passions are and what, the, what would stimulate them. Um, the idea of them coloring all day when they hate coloring would really be damaging. So um, giving options, something that would really, an environment to really hone in on each individual uh, child to see what would stimulate them all day and be beneficial 
and help them develop and help them build some of the skills they need to get through their day and, um, and not be stagnant would be pretty important. Yep. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. Yes, we have something in the chat. Are we talking tonight mostly about day programs? Actually, we're not talking about programs at all. <laughs> we're, we're trying to stay with the vision <laughs> and, and to, you know, it, it is a reality that there are, there are models and choices. Um, and um, tonight we're trying to keep the focus on the vision, um, you know, so that, um, uh, so that we don't feel limited at this moment by um, how this vision might play out. Obviously, there's that part of the process, but this is um, a way to talk together and share with each other about um, uh, kind of solidifying that vision. Some of you may feel like you have a very solid vision. Others may feel like you're just sort of starting to articulate this. Mm -hmm. um, but I think sometimes um, there is a, um, a, a temptation to sort of think about, well, how does this program, day program fit my vision for my child, which is, which is um, also part of it. But we're tonight trying to think about um, the self-directed model and sort of if you had all the support and time and money in the world, um, what, what would you, what are the elements of what you would like to see for your child? Yeah, and, and you know, cause that is the place to start because things, if, if people understand that are working with you where you're really trying to go and what your child is trying to do, then, you know, um, eventually you may find allies as, as others here who will talk in a few minutes will can share, share about that. And, and it might be able to find a path to, to that passion, to that vision. So, um, but you have to start with the vision, yeah. Mm. Yes, Julie. Someone put a word in the chat before uh, connected and I thought that was a really good word. Um, I think at least for Allie, I think she feels good when she's part of a team and is contributing as part of a, what something a group is doing, that sense of belonging, that sense of I'm playing this role on, on a team. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so I think an environment where she's a, you know, she's working together, doing something together with people toward a common goal, I think would bring a lot of satisfaction. I've seen that in other, when she's had the opportunity to, um, to be in a group and be a contributor is something that brings her satisfaction. Yes, yes thank you. Um, I think that work for, for me is a big piece of it. And so for the first time ever, so May is 20 and we finally actually wrote a real vision in her IEP. I think we had the same one from like third grade until last year. That can happen. <laughs> and then, <laughs> but, then, but then nothing like, you know, the clock ticking to get you focused. And, but, but as we thought about it and, and what a week for Amelia might look like, work really is um, just for us, um, it provides connectedness, it provides a common goal. It can, or the way I envision it. Um, Self-esteem, continuous growth, um, a lot of the things, you know, joy. Um, so for me, I've been thinking a lot about what are the kinds of jobs and environments that, um, you know, would be a, be a good match for Amelia's skill set. Um, and I, I had a one good thing the pandemic brought is um, I had the opportunity to watch her work for the first time because we were packing groceries at night for a food pantry. And that's really what sparked it for me because I could see that she was really good at that. And that, um, and because we were in a quiet environment and it was just a few of us 
and it was very structured and it was very repetitive, right? We were doing the same thing. You take the list, you pack the groceries, you write the name on the bag and you do it all over again. So that was what began to spark. Okay, so there, how could I find that kind of, I haven't done it yet, but how, <laughs> how can I, I mean, I think, you know, that began to give me hope about the fact that there could be a centering piece to this and that if we can find the right um, place that, you know, that could be the beginning. And if we, you know, and then the other piece for us that we feel really certain about is cutting basketball and, you know, that community, because that's been a real win for Amelia. And, and it's, you know, we feel so fortunate that there is a alumni team and something that, you know, that opportunity to come together on Saturdays is wonderful and can last for a long time. So, um, and then we just participated in our first Special Olympics basketball tournament. And that was another eye opener for me because I had never seen a Special Olympics where we participated. And that was amazing to see that community in that gym on Saturday. So, um, so those are just a few of the pieces that we've begun to think about as a way to fulfill the vision. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all for um, uh, sharing the uh, uh, pieces of your vision and um, what what kinds of uh, 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 environments and situations that um, provide growth for your child. Um, Kathy and I had the opportunity to talk um, before this workshop with both Cindy Kaplan and Catherine Stanley, um, who are, are in this process of working towards um, putting together um, uh, a, both to, to make the vision that they have both um, developed for their children um, into a, a sort of a, um, a working model uh, so um, I wanted to share before we uh, welcome them to tell us about their journey um, is that the, the things that stood out for us in talking with both of you, Catherine and Cindy, um, about sharing your visions and your process is um, sort of the steps that you laid out for us, which were think about and expand your vision for your child which you're all doing, um, start talking about it now. You don't have to commit to anything. Keep talking about it with others. Connect with others who share your vision. And one of the opportunities tonight is for you to connect with each other, both tonight and potentially beyond. Look for allies and resources for your vision. In parentheses, make friends with DDS. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is not your only ally, but one. Um, look at the programs that are out there and trust the process, keep the process going. So it's in that spirit that we've brought you all together tonight to be um, a part of this process together. Um, and with that, I'd like to turn the, uh, the Zoom microphone, so to speak, over to Cindy and Catherine, who will tell us about their journey from vision to where they are today, it's still in process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and maybe even before, before we share sort of where we started and where we are now, I would just echo everything that you just said, Pam, in terms of, you know, we are not where we were a few years ago. We're nowhere near completion of this, of this vision, but I think we, we all keep coming back again and again to the vision trusting the process because there are, you know, I think we both fluctuate, you know, between being completely overwhelmed and yeah. believing that, mm -hmm. no, there is no option. We have to move forward and that it's just one step at a time and trusting the process. And like everything else, when you want something to happen and you believe in it, you just start talking about it. And I, and I feel like that's kind of what we did and still do. Like I, I talk about it with with everybody, right? Because we're gonna need so much support from, from various people um, that we just keep talking about it. So I'll, I'll, I'll pass the mic over to you, Catherine, if you wanna start and, and we can both contribute, but um, I just wanted to echo, echo that first. Yeah. 
so I'm very future focused. It's a, it's a burden. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been looking at programs for a long time. Like whenever I'd see one, I would just park on the street and say, can I come look? You know, I mean, since Bailey was like 10. Um, and I've seen some really disheartening things. I know we want to say I'm going to upbeat, but um, it hasn't made me feel good. And I've been terrified, um, frankly, when I saw something. So and just like when we when we bought our first house, there was this area we didn't know if Ellie would walk or not. That was like sort of a out like a there was a floor above it, and I was like that could be a bedroom, and this could be an accessible entrance. I've always been like that. So it just so there's two paths about like looking at what's out there, being friends with DDS. They are telling us to go see programs, and one of our uh, board, Trudy, who some of you may know, Trudy Newman. The ultimate connector. I met her through PT. The PT connected us and our daughters um, long ago. She's doing that. So we're doing that, being friends with DDS and all that. But I wanted a place where Ellie, um, like everything everybody said, I want it customized to her. I want her to be known because she's nonverbal and people tend to project on her or not wait for her to finish on her verse, voice output. And she's really sensitive and gentle. And she needs to eat the right food. If she doesn't eat the right food, the G tube's going back and she's got terrible reflux even with eating the right food. And she will get, you know, God knows what will happen to her. So, um, you know, very low, moti slow motility. So it's just critical that she's in a place that can kind of ebb and flow with her to stay healthy like we do at home, but also invigorate her and have energy for her and, you know, know her. This non, you know, this person is nonverbal, but is very communicative. So, and I never talked about it for a long time. I barely talked about it to people I worked with because I've been discriminated against in the past, in the in the early two thousands, in a corporate job about having a child at all. Um, but then I did open up about it to a colleague, and um, she was like, "Oh, you got to meet my friend so and so." She did this thing because I sort of said we were in the process of looking. I was disheartened. And that's how I met the people at High Spirit Farm, um, you know, and, and Cindy met the same people in a different way. And um, having looked at places and understanding Ellie and Cotting changed my world. I totally agree with you who said that, um, you know, Michelle. Yeah changed my world about what was possible and opened up for me. And, and I just was like, how am I going to do that? I literally have a basement in this house. We're thinking about turning into a day program. Cause I'm like, what are we going to do? Right. So we're literally starting renovations on that now, but I was just like, we got to have somewhere like that. And I can't reproduce cutting at home. There's no way, yeah. you know, and yeah. I want to try and reproduce that. And then seeing this other place that did that has a version of that. I was like, that's it and the parents have control versus and because we know also families of people in group homes and the stories aren't great what i've heard i'm not sure not all of them are bad but um just the fact that the parents have some control that you get some say you get to be in there you're not just shut out was key to me because you know i want la to be okay and yeah. and so these were key key elements and cindy pass it back to you I just want to say Deirdre sure. is helping us do this now too. She's here um, yes, uh, yeah. with us and is on our team. Some of you may know Deirdre. She was a physical happy. therapist at Cotting um, and, um, yeah. and uh, both, at, I, some of you I know, know both Cindy and Catherine. They are present Cotting parents of present yeah. Cotting students who um, uh, and uh, connected with each other and I know you'll talk about how you connected with each other for this. Um, and um, sure. we'll hear a little bit from you, I hope, too, Deidre, about how you connected with these folks, too. Um, but I, Catherine, I really liked what you said about um, how it was hard to start talking about it, but it was important to start talking about it with everybody because you don't know where a good idea is going to come from. Yeah. And sort of having that elevator speech, so to speak, sort of, you know, this is what I'm talking about and, and thinking about, and that's not always easy to do for a lot of reasons, right? You don't know how people are going to react, but, but you're also telling this wonderful story about, and having had the courage to do that, you got 
some wonderful feedback. So mm -hmm. I know you're passing the, the microphone to Cindy, so I'll let you do that. Whom I met sure. when our girls were four, right? Four, five? I think that's about right. Over Feldenkrais, Christ, <laughs> right? But I don't even remember, I don't, I don't even remember. Anyway, well, Catherine, so I'll just also say, so yes, so I'm Cindy and my daughter Mira has been a student at Cotting. She's also 20. Um, and she started Cotting when she was in fifth grade, moved from public school over to Cotting. Um, and one thing that, uh, I don't know if uh, the other Catherine on the phone call has a daughter, who, uh, Jamie, and they both, Jamie and Mira have gone to a summer camp. You might be able to hear Mira screaming in the background. Um, uh, it's okay. Have gone to a summer camp for the last, uh, Mira's gone now four years in a row, well, not four years in a row because there was one year that was camp, COVID canceled. Um, but she's gone four years to this camp in upstate New York where she's away for six weeks. And she's in this setting where she's getting all of her services as well as some academic support, but more than anything, she's with peers and the counselors are basically now her age. But, you know, the first year we dropped her off, I think I was in tears half the way home and totally beside myself for the first few days. And after the first few days, she was on fire and like just beaming and had the time of her life. And it was an amazing, I'm sure everybody can imagine, it was an amazing respite for the rest of my family. And she, she, was, she thrived. She absolutely thrived in this environment. And I think that was really the start of me being able to think. I remember years ago when people would ask, what do you foresee in Mirror's future, you know, eight years from now? And I remember saying, I hope that I'm open to her living somewhere else. Like that's where I started. And then I think really after this camp experience and she's had a few overnights, she loves being in social environments out of the house. And so it was really understanding that her staying at home is not what she, where she will thrive um, and going to a day program. So Catherine and I, several years ago, we met, I think we met at Starbucks and we just started talking. And then I had gone, and I think I learned through Catherine about a presentation that was happening. Now I forget, was it at, um, I don't know, it was one therapeutic center in Watertown where the, the founders of High Spirit Farm, which is an integrated work-life community up in Great Barrington, were speaking and talked about how they developed this model where basically um, the young adults, I may just refer to them as kids, even though they're not kids, that's fine. live in this mm -hmm. community that's part farm and they, and they live there. So basically they're working on the farm in the morning and the afternoon, they are an integral part of the community. They go into the community to swim, to ride horses. They have art classes. They come back, they do dinner, they do their program and they go to sleep and do the whole thing again. But everybody who works there lives there. So there aren't staff that are checking in the morning and looking at their watch and checking out. There's a couple that lives, you can all, the, the key factors and Catherine jump in at any time. Um, there can't be more than three adults, young adults living in each house. And I think they're now, they have three houses. Um, and then there's a resident couple, or it could be two single people, or maybe even one person who are the um, householders and it's basically their house so they're living in this really lovely home there's a farm the people who for whom it's attractive to live there are not even people who necessarily their first goal is to work with this type of you know this this population but they love farming and they want to live in community or they love farming and they want to work with you know the this this population and so they've now been in existence for I think 13 years and they're finally at a place, it took a while. Um, and they have, they have done this work through DDS um, to convince them that this is the most affordable and most meaningful um, way for at least their kids to live. So we're, we're modeling what we will bring into reality after after High Spirit Farm, but we realized that our girls are not interested in farming. Um, so we will cater it to them, but we're trying to, what we, are, what we are creating is a model where similarly, they're living in a lovely place and the people who work there are living there. And as Catherine said, and I will echo, 
we as parents then are on the board. So we're not, so that we have a say as well in the program in, and we, and we pull together everybody else who's on the board. So at least we trust everybody who is, we're working together in a larger community um, to make this happen. So it was really us talking and, yeah. and now we're moving forward step-by-step step. and it is overwhelming and it's exciting. And I think we just feel like there's no other option. We have to do this. Yeah. So and Catherine, go ahead and take vision. over and we can go back and forth. It really started with vision around all the things that you said and, and all the things you guys said in the chat, right? And this is like a customized environment where the people really know they did have, they do have some people come in and stay from like, they were able to do a visa program, which was amazing. People getting credit from other places to learn about people with special needs. So this is such a vibrant environment and they didn't get COVID to tell you how safe it was, right? They, it's just really, really safe. Um, but it started with our vision and we had met with the founders who were a group of parents in Cambridge who just got together and said, there's gotta be a better way. And, you know, as by bumps and paths and all that, and they kept emphasizing the vision. So we had all these conversations and finally we took all those conversations we had had between, you know, Cindy and Mark and Trudy and Paul and my husband, David, and put them in a proposal. And that's what really changed everything around just like committing it. And we sent it to them and asked them to support us. And can we, can we not support us, but can we, um, you know, help you be, they're going to be our fiscal agent. That was the big kind of win to help us start raising money. But what Cindy's talking about is there's the community that they've, um, through DDS and through, um, they have an agent agency been able to do sort of like drawing out of two buckets of funding from DDS, but then they're also supported by, by a 501c3. Right, so we're at the point now where we're setting up our corporate entity that we will then change into a 501c3. They're gonna be our agency. You need an agency to take the money from DDS and the federal government to High Spirit. So it's quite complex, but they were more than happy to share with us. And it just took us together saying, what is it gonna be and what do we wanna do? And then writing it down, we just formed our board like a month ago officially and we're getting that set up. So. That all sounds really, it, it sounds overwhelming to me when I say it. And at the same time, we have this other parallel path where Trudy, connector extraordinaire, is like best friends with DDS and, and, and also going out to all these other places. But like New England Village also started by a bunch of families. There's a bunch of them, like you just never know. So we're trying to visit those and everything has been slower because of COVID, but we're just, so there is a lot going on. That's why you need a team. Um, there's no way I could ever do all this on my own and do everything else we do. And, you know, like Deirdre joining us, you know, help that perspective, like medical equipment providers in terms of the place and where, you know, where are those, but uh, many, many more things, Deirdre. So each of us is kind of playing to our strengths. Um, you know, Cindy's amazing around the fundraising and Paul, Trudy's husband is a corporate director of communications is a great writer so you know all these things um just seem like magic now that they're put together but it's just from talking about it and coming together and you know it's a lot it feels like moving a mountain but it's just step by step you know because the clock is ticking I just feel like a big cliff is coming when Ellie doesn't have clotting anymore I'm just like no what are we gonna do <laughs> they're just coming out of our shell she's amazing now because of clotting and you know, what's gonna happen. So, um, and we're still visiting places. And a lot of those places have a two year waiting list, you know, um, yeah. to just- If see. I can add, if I can add just that, yeah. you know, what High Spirit Farm has done is sort of paved the way with DDS so that DDS understands that there can be alternatives totally. that that parents can drive these visions yes. and create. Um, and and I'll just say like, they're, they're oh, go ahead. Somebody has a question. Katie, go Katie. ahead, jump yes. in. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I just have a quick question for um, what you what you're trying to build is a residential day program. Is it because of the guidelines? Is it for six individuals? Is that what it's for? Here's the thing. It's a it's more than that. So it's a work integrated work life community, and we can choose whether or not to have the day program there, and we want to have the day program there because it's a huge bucket of funding. So our girls are wheelchair users, so like. Muddy farm is not going to work. So we're thinking like garden or, you know, I'd love a geothermal greenhouse or, you know, chicken stuff like that, that they can do and arts and stuff. And that would be the day program. And then 
the six that you heard is um, it's three residents per house, especially if their wheelchair uses that. It's kind of the guidance right now with DDS. It has changed over the years. And then you have two, um, two, you have two householders for each house, and then you have two more carers. Um, that's the high spirit farm model. So we're looking at buying land, creating accessible housing, building some houses, way, building housing, high spirit farm rented first. And then the day program would be there. They're like nine to five. I actually have a, um, a little thing I wrote up about what the day looks like, but it's like nine to noon is like day program. And then they have lunch and then they go off. Like one could be going to PT appointment. One could be going to the pool. One could be hanging out. You know, it just. Are answer? you limited? Are you limited to how many houses you can put on the property you're purchasing? They don't want an enclave. So it's interesting. High Spirit has three houses right now. DDS said to us, we don't want it to be a private enclave, you know? So um, I think they want a little distance between them, but we're looking at a big enough plot of land for three. I don't, they just don't want a private enclave. They want evidence that they're, you know, cause it's just like, you know, in school, when you're picking a placement, it's like the least restrictive environment. When they become adults, it's the most integrated environment. They don't want them isolated because that's a backlash boomerang from the institutions, right? So. Yeah, I, just, I don't know what they're going to say if they're oh. on this plot of land. I think the high school has two houses on the same plot of land, and then they're renting a house from a parent that that lets them rent the house that's adjacent right next to it. And that seemed to go. Thanks, Kathy. I, I want to say one little thing um, that I think is just so amazing that High Spirit Farms did. We're calling it, an, we're, we're using the term integrated um, work-life community. And that term didn't exist before High Spirit Farms. Um, happened and 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 it's such a wonderful idea that you take this whole community and create both the residents and a, and the meaningful daytime programming all in together and that it's a community and um and I I I point that out because this is what this group of people have, are doing and it's what uh, high spirit farms did but they did this from nothing. They came up with this idea. And so this might not be perfect for everybody who's on this Zoom call or everybody at Cotting School, but they figured out what worked for them. And this has now become you know, a category in DDS. It didn't exist before. Community it, it, has, it has not in that sense. It's, it's still considered a pilot. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have an actual number. So part of what we're doing is doing legislative advocacy. We're going to start that up now to get it to be a number. And Bob and Ginny, and I think the rest have been quite dedicated to meeting with parents to, I'm not saying just deluge them with meetings, but like the more we can have communities like this, then get it to be an option, an official option. That's the goal, right? Because then it's another option. Right now it's she's, it's bootstrapped under um, uh, what is it called? Shared living. And, you know, and, and it's a bootstrap situation. Um, so we want it to be its own number. That's what we're, I don't know Kathy went, that's what we're going for. Oh, Michelle, sorry. I'm sorry. I just wanted to know, you all are saying, are you saying DDS? DDS, Department of Developmental. Services. Yes. Michelle, that's for Massachusetts. Okay. I'm in New Hampshire, so it wasn't <laughs> no. sounding that familiar. Yes. And I'm, yeah. I'm very sorry that that it's Massachusetts heavy, mm. but, but we, yeah. fine. yes, fine. yes. But yeah. um, Kathy yeah. also is very knowledgeable about the New Hampshire um, uh, possibilities as well. But yeah. yes, thank you for raising that. Yes. I'll jump in and just share just one other piece. And then, and then I think probably we can guide it with questions. And I see Rebecca, you have a question. I just wanted to say in terms of like, okay, so how do you make this happen? Like financially, what does this look like? And I think part of it is that, you know, our, our kids will, wherever they go, they have a certain, um, a certain amount of money that will accompany them through DDS. Um, I know our SSI. kids and SSI and and, and I know Mira has, and, and Ellie as well, quali have yeah. qualified for PCA, uh, PCA funding, which they will continue to get as well. And then my understanding from what um, High Spirit Farm has had to do is that they also have to fundraise privately. I think the DDS money has covered the cost of their programming, but the cost of the land and buying the house and we will need accessible vans and all of that. What they said, and this was several years ago, and I don't know whether this is applicable to the two houses or one, but you know they talked about needing to raise at least a hundred thousand, about a hundred thousand dollars a year, 
um, to keep going. So set maybe two, is it two, 200,000 now? 250. Yeah, so, so it was for one house. There's 250. Yeah. For so two houses. So just, I just thought people might want to know, so where does this, you know, money come from? Obviously we'll have to yes. do fundraising so that we can begin to buy land. And I think for us, it probably makes sense to build houses. Like I say this and I'm thinking, what in the world? <laughs> How are we going to do this? But well, we're going to yeah. do this. Um, anyway, Rebecca, you had a question. So um, I, I've only been tiptoeing into, I watch these webinars on self-directed and it's, they're kind of interesting because it's the same presentation, but people ask different questions. So anyways, and it's an, I, so I watch them, but, but a common question that comes up is parents saying, like asking about pooling the money and they keep coming back and saying, this money for self-directed is for one-on-one -on -one supports. Like they're very clear about that, which doesn't really make right. sense, right? Because if you have three young adults that want to go do something, they won't do it. They won't, they won't do, do it. it. So I'm they very, won't do it. They won't. So how did you have this is so how did you get them to 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 um because it sounds like they are funding. Or, I mean, there, so there's a nonprofit entity that pays for all the stuff that the day. Pro so the day program is another bucket of money that's not the same as the DDS individual support. So that day program can go to funding the day program, you know, some of the supports around that. And then you've got the individual funding that can go to the direct care and then right. the PCA hours and everything else. But the houses and everything else and any group thing like the transportation that would have to be the nonprofit entity. Okay, so the day funding. So essentially, so my understanding is that the, you know, they, Mass the state of Massachusetts gives money to the day providers, right? And then if, and so essentially you're becoming another day provider. So you're- day, day program. Day mm -hmm. program, okay. So you're yeah. becoming your own day program. They're going to fund you for the number of young adults you have attending your day program and then the other monies will be used to contribute to living and care and all of that okay the salary so some of the establishing things. yourself as a day program that you're that so you're turns out really to be self-directed you're a day it's program. a third of their income like it's a lot and yeah. the cool thing high spirit did for us is they're sponsoring us they became an agency and they're sponsoring yeah. us that was another key step but Okay, um, so that's yeah. so that so that is so essentially. I mean, it makes total sense to me that you would. It, I mean, it seems right now that there's this chasm between self-directed and what families are hoping for, and then the day program. So you kind of filled that chasm by creating your own day program. High spirited, yeah, yeah. yeah. High spirit right. East is just the name of us. who are not. Um, they did agree to be our fiscal agent, so we can raise money. Um, until we get our nonprofit status, there's a whole bunch of steps. If people are thinking about yeah. doing this, I'm always happy to tell you what they are because we'll just have done them. But um, so we're just calling ourselves High Spirit East because we might we're slightly yeah. east of them. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I I know that we're we're yeah. um, getting to the end of our time, and mm -hmm. I want to make sure that if anybody else has questions, you have a chance to to ask them. Either One thing I would just say is like, just have some hope because if you're not seeing it out there, like there are people who've gone before us that have built really cool environments. Really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, of, and I'll also just add that I think Catherine and I, as we continue to move along, would be happy to, you know, if, yeah. if any of you embark in something similar that we would be happy to share Absolutely. where we are. Well, this we is an, an evening for making connections, and that is mm -hmm. with you two and among each other. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that um, that um, sort of going back to the vision piece, that um, having that vision and, and continuing to talk about it, finding, um, as, as Cindy and Catherine said, they kept talking about it and they eventually hooked um, connected up with each other and other parents. And it doesn't necessarily mean that those connections will need to or should result in what Cindy and Catherine and um, Deirdre and the Newmans are doing. 
Um, but it's really important to be able to share that with others, to be able to get more connections and more ideas about what's the best fit for your child. So, um, Pam, yeah. I see one other hand. Uh, Michelle Chadwick, did you want to say, ask a question? Oh, or? yes. Thank you, Kathy. Um, does Cindy or Catherine, is there, a, um, is there a website that we can go look at or anything like that just yet? Or highspirit.org is, I think, their website. Um, we don't yeah, have we a don't website. Have I don't anticipate that's like low on the totem pole. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, that, that, thank you for sharing that. It will be that you can. They're also working on building a site for these kind of resources for parents that's not launched yet, but uh, when it is, we'll send the information to Pam and Kathy. Um, it's all about resources of what they've done. They're, they're, they're building that now. I think they, not I think, I know, um, they, they modeled High Spirit Farm yes. off Camp of Hill. Camp Hill, which you could also look up Camp Hill. I don't know, I'm sure it's camphill.org maybe, um, but it's in Pennsylvania, but it is also a school and residential community that is based yeah. on farming and you know, a, a similar, similar model. But also Rudolf Steiner, Tessie knows all about yes. that and educated yes. me about that. Thank you very much, Tessie. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so well, much thank, everyone. Yes, for, yes for, thank you for coming and sharing. Yeah. Our um, pleasure. And, and um, to meet everybody. yeah. Yes, be here. absolutely, absolutely. And um, if you want to connect with each other, you're probably, you may, hopefully all are in the um, Cotting Parent Staff Student Directory, so you can find each other there. And if you need any help connecting with each other, Kathy and I are always happy to help. Uh, and somebody's asking for my email, which I'm busily typing into the chat, but it's all, all the staff at Cotting is their first initial last name at cotting.org, except for a few, but most of them all are that. So that's yes. right there. Well, thank you. We'll see you again at another webinar. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thank you. All right. Bye. Have a wonderful, wonderful time.